Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us for another fun-filled edition of the Real Estate Backstory. My name is Alan Richardson, uh, myself and Ming Richardson. We're your hosts for our weekly edition of, well, again, the Real Estate Backstory. How about we repeat ourselves? Good way to start the day. <laughs> so every week we get together on you know, Monday morning around 9 a.m. and we kind of go over what's happening in the market. What you know, what, what trends are we seeing? How things are moving? Just trying to keep you know all of our real estate folks up to date on the comings and goings of the real estate market. So I'm the managing broker at Max One Realtor and Realtor Partners. I'm the compliance broker for, with Max One Realty and Realtor Partners. And we are very, very blessed to have you with us here today. So absolutely, uh, we kind of want to jump on in here. And so we're going we're gonna to start off with everything we have going on, kind of in training and, and all kinds of things happening around the state, that kind of stuff. So uh, tomorrow, uh, GAR has a Member Connects uh, Summit over in Macon. So if you want to make that one down there, and uh, they've done six of these around the state. And I believe this is the last one coming up here. It's really so, a good event, honestly. You get to meet some uh, movers and shakers, as well as knowing what the neat, um, latest trend and and just have a, a, a good discussion. Yeah, the, the folks from Greg there, that kind of stuff. So it's always really, really good information. They talk about everything going on there. Uh, also tomorrow we have uh, Remind, Grow Your Business Your Farming. That's on virtual. On Wednesday, I'm teaching Fast Top Dollar Home Sales and Staging. Basically, it's our staging class, and I teach that from a from the point of view of like I'm, I'm not trying to sell you staging, uh, but I do want you to be able to stage your prop your your properties properly for the most money in the, in the least or the most money in the least and, amount. Of time and I know a lot of you think just because right now we're short in inventory, staging is not important. But let oh, me tell you, it, it makes is. a huge difference when it comes to appraisers and also whether or not you'll get the best dollar for your seller. And, and we're going to show you where, where there's some trends coming up now. And so mm -hmm. we are starting to see more inventory coming on. We're starting, starting to see, uh, you know, where there, there really is a shift happening right now. And it's a good shift overall. So uh, also on Wednesday at 11 o'clock, we have live in person in our Noonan office. It's Chime Training. It's a lunch and learn. So free lunch and learn about the Chime CRM and website and, platform. And Mark Brown is going to be hosting yep. it, I believe. Yep. And he is such a fabulous person yep. uh, to be around with. So uh, join him. Yep. On Thursday, well, by the way, I'm teaching Chime. I'm not sure. I'm teaching staging in our airport office on Wednesday. So please come join me there. Uh, on Thursday in our Fayetteville office, both Fayetteville and in person, um, Ricky Mitchell, uh, the amazing Ricky, Ricky Mitchell is coming over to, um, and she's gonna be teaching how to protect yourself and your investment with a home inspection kind of thing. Also on Thursday, Hey, come on and wind down with me. Yeah. And for those of you that are great, yeah. uh, in Shalinda yeah. and a couple out of my uh, top agents here, uh, we're just going to go over some of the discussion and some of the uh, strategy for negotiation. If you don't drink, you don't have to. I'll have some sparkling grape juice for you. So, uh, but we'll uh, have a good time to fellowship as well as talk about industry trends. So even if you're not a maximum one agent, come on. Yeah. Uh, I love to hear your feedback because, you know, all of us have different experiences uh, in our real estate world. Well, and, and also, you know, one, uh, well, that, that starts at six o'clock on Thursday night. So please come join, come join Ming on that. And then all, then starting, not starting this week, but starting next week is our new training series through the Buffini training group, Brian Buffini, and it's the hundred days to greatness program. And so we're, we're going to be rolling that that is only live in our offices. We are not doing, you know, we don't have the rights to do virtual, that kind of stuff, but we are gonna be going through the, the 100 Days to Greatness training series uh, in our offices. And so um, this really is a, a truly phenomenal program to kind of get you to get yourself, you know, re, re, you know re, relaunched. Yeah, re, reinvigorated, kind of fired up again. And also at the same time, really look at, you know, how can I build my business? If you're new, this is a phenomenal program to start with. And, and even if you've been an agent for a long time, but are not hitting your achievement and your, your production goals, another really, really well, great. And I also yeah. know there's a lot of agent out there that has experienced some family um, traumas and also a personal setback. So hopefully this will help you to get yourself re-motivated yeah. and restarted. And uh, we'd love to see you. Yeah. Now, this is a, an extremely comprehensive program. 
these are all the different training modules we're going to be going through. Now, the first week, we're actually doing one and two, which is launching your career and working by the referral system. Both those, what this is, 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 is you're going to get a workbook, and we're going to go through that together. And then every week, there's a series of videos, and then there's follow-up action items that goes with it. So first week is going to be launching your career, working by referral, and then we're going to do a different video and a different uh, section of our workbook every single week. Uh, we will be able to catch folks up if, if they miss out on, on, on different ones. But again, this is only in office. We don't have the rights to, I mean, you can go buy the program for 500 bucks if you want to. And, and I strongly encourage you to do that as well. I'm not knocking it at all. And so I don't mean that to come across as a, a snippet or anything like that. Um, but, uh, you know, I do want, uh, we, we do really, really uh, see, a, see a, a strong, um, correlation between people who treat their business like a business and how successful they are and folks that just kind of wing it. And so this is one of those where it really is really, really valuable to have, uh, you know, a coach, a mentor, a guide, uh, that kind of stuff that can help you guide, guide your way well, through. Well, sometimes, you know, it's about perspective. And if you keep, if you're consistently looking at certain things in certain angle, you'll never explore the other and once you see it from a different perspective, you may change your mind how you want to strategically um, conduct your business. Yeah. And sometimes it's more geared toward your personality. So, yeah. you know, this is a win-win really. And it's not, it's not a box fit all, but it is a way for you to motivate yourself and get you started. Yep. Yeah. Very good. So speaking about agent production and how you're doing that kind of stuff there's a you know there's a new survey and actually it's from the buffini group as well talking about what agents do with their day and this to me was kind of a kick in the teeth because one of the things that, that, that i try and promote a lot is is you know having a routine having a schedule you know you know working on your business every single day and so this is what you know we polled well, not we, but the industry, Buffini, you know, right. the Buffini Group, National Association of Realtors, they went through and said, what does a day in the life of a real estate agent look like? You know, for the folks out there, what are our averages? And this one was just a gut kick for me. Because the number one thing that we do in the real estate industry? Errands. Errands. Yeah, we just kind of <laughs> run around. Now, I know that, that you know, like, like especially if, if only one of you in your household is in real estate, that, that you become that go-to person. Like if the kids are sick, you're going. If this has to happen, you're going. You know, it's, it's like it's like our careers don't don't carry as much weight, but it's because we are more flexible. I understand that. But still, 37% of time is errands. After that, 20% on admin. That one kind of makes sense. You know, like, like, like we do have to do a lot of things administratively. We have contracts to write, negotiations to do, that kind of thing. But then we start getting into 18% as email. And a lot of that, to me, a lot of that admin time really should be email time. Uh, you know, the fact that we're spending 20% of our time or 18% of our time dealing in email means that we got too much junk mail. We need to straighten some of that out. because You need you, to unsubscribe. Right. We're talking about 37% <laughs> on email and admin. You're talking that that, that, that almost equals uh, too much, way too much time. 12% of the time, we're surfing the web. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but we don't get a whole lot of clients surfing the web. So, you know, I know that it's it's a fun thing to kind of do, hang out, you know. Well, I mean, I, I get it. There's time that you want to know something or how to make certain thing work, or you may be doing research about, yeah. you know, who is the best contractor for certain products. So I get that. Um, but, you know, understand like TikTok, he can watch TikTok yeah. innocently the first time and next thing you know, it's three hours later, three hours later, corner of your mouth. <laughs> yeah. so. so just set a time limit yeah. and schedule. And and I do want to give a shout out to Corey Knight, who um, was here last week teaching about team. And one thing he did do is to have everybody write down a schedule on what they're doing on day and reflect back on what you're truly, you know, you have to be honest with yourself doing for the day. And that's going to be an eye-opener for you to see what exactly you're doing um, that is productive or non-productive. Right. All right. After that, 11% on social media. And I don't see anything necessarily wrong with this. If we really are using social media to build our business. As a basis, right. You know, like th these are just real estate agents. So, uh, you know, like 
if you look at how much of your business comes from social media, then that would make sense. So like, like if you're, if you spend 10% or 11% of your time and 11% of your business comes from social media, then I think that's great. I know so many agents that will spend, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30% of their time on social media mm -hmm. and get zero business out of it kind of thing. So if you are doing social media, make sure it's for that. Only 3% of average of, of agents time goes to talking with clients. And, and when you really look at this list, what is the number one thing that you could do to generate more business? Talking you think, with your clients. You think Aaron's is going to do good? How about surfing that web? Yeah, is that, that generating a whole lot of business? Email? You know, it really comes down to, to we got to make sure that we got our priorities straight, you know. And, and when I look at this list, I, if you want to fix your business, do you want to blow your business up? Turn Germany some of those numbers calls. around, you know. Yep. Well, when you start spending 10, 15 percent of your time talking with your clients, and, then, and even that sounds ridiculously low, we're only going to spend like, like, like if we double the amount of time that we spend, spend with clients, we're talking six percent of our time talking with clients. That is a huge improvement over. And you know, we're at. it's not like we're asking change your habit immediately, but make some minor changes and aggressively get. Uh, talking with your client a little more bigger spot than what it is currently given. Yep. All right. So I'll get up my soapbox now. And, and, and so we want to talk, we want to talk for just a minute about, you know, we've seen a lot of buyers starting to get burned by this hot housing market. And, and, we're, and we're seeing buyers back off and, you know, they're tired of, of the, the, the skyrocketing prices, bidding wars, things like that. And so that is, you know, we know that there's some folks that are sitting on the sidelines. And one thing we kind of want to share and kind of point out is that, you know, there is some light at the end of the tunnel. There is some hope around the corner. So like, like this is new data from the National Association of Realtors. And you can see what's going on on new listings. New listings is up like the new the, the, the number of properties coming on the market is up by 9 percent. You can see that that's been increasing for the last couple of weeks. There isn't a huge improvement on pricing. We're not going to see a, 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 a big up or a big or, or, or leveling off or going down on pricing, I don't think. Um, but basically, this, this uptick in listings is really helping to, to raise sales because overall, our sales numbers, when we just talk about the number of houses, that really uh -huh. is pretty low compared to what it really should be because we have a lot of buyers still wanting to buy houses. So seeing that there's more inventory coming in, that's a real plus for us and a real bonus uh, on, on, on kind of where that's really going. And so we are starting to see more houses jumping onto the market um, and, and we are starting to see a shift and I'm, I'm going to share some of that with you, but, but kind of before we get into that, I want to talk about, you know, where the majority of our buyers are, I mean, especially our millennial buyers are coming from and that is rent. And so right now, rent prices, this is from CoreLogic, and this shows kind of what, what single family rent index is doing year over year. Um, overall, rent prices are the highest they've ever been. So the idea of, of our renters saying, you know what, we're not going to engage in this market right now. Prices are going up. We, we, we're just going to wait for them to fall. Well, at this point, they're going to go broke. Okay, because rents are going up and right now rents have already gone up and rents typically fall three to nine months behind housing. So, you know, these landlords that, that own property, when, when, when the, when the um, leases are coming up, they're coming back with, with pretty significant price increases because there's a lot of demand uh -huh. for rentals as well right now. And so we're really seeing that, that for our renters who are waiting this, this is kind of going to be a real challenge for them. So now we're starting to see a little bit more inventory and we're going to talk about mortgage rates here in a second as well. It really is a pretty good time. Overall here in Georgia, this is the number of, this is how many years it takes for the average renter to save 10%. And so it, in, in, you know, it can seem like a daunting task. It takes 15 years in Atlanta. Now it, it, it takes much less time if you only need 3% kind of thing. And, you know, that, that's down to about four years for, for most people to save up 3%, right? that kind of stuff. But that, that's if you wanted to have 10% down. And you can see how we rank out compared to a lot of the cities. I mean, there's a lot of places that, that it's well over 30 years to save 10% awesome. for a down payment, yeah, that Portland, kind of stuff. Denver, Seattle, oh, that New list York. keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it goes up 35, 36 years kind of thing. Yeah. So we really are much closer to the bottom on that range kind of thing. 
but you know there is opportunities out there for it at the same time interest rates took a dip i mean like a serious dip this past week and that is great news for our buyers that really improves how much home that they can afford kind of well that's due to because it's not necessarily they can't afford more home it's just because the price of the house is going up well, yeah, I mean, you the know. prices are going up, but with where the interest rates are now, you know, like it, it really is, uh, you know, it came in at 2.78 last week, which is ridiculously low. Now, there's a couple of reasons that it was kind of like a perfect storm. One is that the Fed and everybody has a different reason for why, why the interest rates dropped again last week, but, but the Fed is not worried about inflation. Uh -huh. And then the other thing is that now uh, all of a sudden the, the mortgage industry got very, very scared about the new COVID variants and the uptick in cases. And then when you put all that at the same time, that pushed stocks down. And, and, uh -huh. and, the, and the whole thing is, is that, you know, for out there in, in the markets, whenever stocks go down, people move their money out of stocks Absolutely. into bonds and and, and so for mortgage rates, mortgage rates are, are based on the 10 year treasury, which is a bond. And so more people are buying bonds, the more that price goes down. Well, the reason yeah. they're buying bond is bond is steady. They know exactly yeah. what the returns are on It's lower returns, but yeah. It's lower, yeah, but it's very but safe. Safe. And yeah. where stock fluctuate, you can gain 5,000 last yesterday and lose 10,000 the next day. Now, uh, Freddie Mac came out this past week kind of thing, and, and they kind of went over and, and said, where do they think interest rates are really going? And, and that's why we're, we're, we're kind of wanting to really promote the fact that we need to, to be out talking to our clients right now, especially the ones sitting on the fence. Because if you look at, you know, at, at where we're looking at 2021, you know, we, quarter one, we're at 2.9, around 3% for quarter two. They're predicting that, that the third quarter this year that it goes up to a 3.3% uh -huh. and 3.4 by the end of the year. Yep. And they're looking at next year averaging around 3.7, which is a full percentage point oh, higher right. where we are today. And so, you know, this is, these are Freddie Mac, you know, Fannie, Freddie, you know, FHA. These are, these are the, the guys who are saying, this is where we see interest rates going. This is not just Al throwing some numbers out there kind of thing. And we, but we, we really do believe that that is a really solid estimate of where we see things going. And so we've got more inventory coming on the market. Uh, we are not gonna see a whole lot of help on, on, on price appreciation. It, we're gonna see some leveling, but we're not gonna see prices drop. Uh, but we are gonna see interest rates rising up. So now is a great time to get our clients off the fence. Um, for any of your clients that are looking for refis out there, um, you know, FHA has kind of tossed out the extra refinance fee for Fannie and Freddie loans, which, which is kind of a, a nice improvement. Uh, you know, it will help some folks on, on the refi side. Um, jobless claims last week were a little bit higher than expected. Um, it, it, it kind of, it was right under three, under 400,000 right. and now it's yeah. back up. So it does show that, that the job market is a little bit um, kind of out of whack, if that makes any kind of sense. Um, one thing that we wanted to kind of jump in here really quickly here. So our friend Scott Eves, is, he is here with us today. And so, hey, Scott, I'm going to promote you. And so hopefully be able to. Um, you should have. Um, hopefully, hopefully we can access. see you now. There you oh, are. there we are. And so I'm, I'm going to. You need to unmute know. yourself, Scott. So. Oh, I hear you. Hey, Scott. Good morning. How are you? Good hey. hey, good seeing you, my friend. Good seeing you. I was actually sitting over on a Google Meet, so I apologize for um, coming in oh, a little no later. Problem. No worries, no worries. We, um, you know, every week we love to have some folks join us. And, and I tell you, if you have, uh, th there are some, I guess, folks I would call industry leaders in, in, in real estate. And I tell you, Scott is definitely one of those. Scott, he's you know, been around a long time. I, don't, don't, don't date Scott. <laughs> no, no, uh, you know, in like, a good but, way. But, but in we, a good uh, way. So Scott is a dear friend and, and we really appreciate him being here kind of thing. And, and, and so Scott is with Old Republic. And, and uh, we, we appreciate you joining us and taking a few minutes to talk about home warranties with us this morning. So thank you. Absolutely. So uh, tell me, how has the home um, 
warranty. home warranty side of things been going? Because with the crazy market that we've seen, uh, it just seems like, like, you know, there for a while, we saw a lot of folks just like uh, doing anything to get an offer. And so, you know, we had agents that, that were not doing due diligence, uh, waiving appraisals, waiving inspections, and then also waiving home, you know, home warranties. And we think, and that's one of the things that we don't like about where, where the industry has been going, you know, what is that? What, how's that how's look that like from your side? You? Yeah. Right. Well, we definitely did see that um, at the beginning of this market, but it seems like things are, um, are on the uptick at this point. I think people have realized that they still, it's important to have the home warranty as part of either their contract or purchasing it after they close. Um, with Old Republic, they can purchase a warranty up to 30 days after closing. I always say, even though prices are skyrocketing and you have multiple offers, things are still going to break. And the unexpected is what oh, we absolutely. cover. Oh, absolutely. So <laughs> that is um, definitely changing, you know, over the summer. So we're excited about that. Yeah, we are seeing things starting to go back to a little bit more, I guess, close to normal. Uh, not that there is ever a really that normal of a thing in, in, <laughs> in real estate. Um, because there for a while, it just seemed like, like we even had some, or we know of some issues where, where folks were trying to get, you know, get home warranties after they bought a house that had defects and then trying to get home warranties afterwards and kind of stick it to, stick it that's to you guys. That's not how it works. And that's not what a home warranty is there for. Kind of thing. It's not, it's not your get out of jail free card on that. You had any issues with that? Well, we have, I mean, you, you know, people are, you know, they 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 were caught off guard. I guess I would should say. You know, the home warranty yeah. was not in the contract. You know, they knew that they could purchase it up to thirty days after closing for it to go into effect. But you know, once you close on a property, your mind goes elsewhere. You know, moving in, setting up utilities, getting kids in school. The home warranty is the last thing that they think of until something happens. So I encourage agents to, even if it's not going to be a part of your contract, to make it a part of the closing. So order the warranty um, and then have the buyer purchase it at closing. So it's done. You know, nobody has to worry about it after closing and then won't think about it, you know, when something actually breaks. And um, we want to cover them, but we want to cover them before something actually happens. So, I, you know, it's like everything. It's, it's just constant education period, you know, especially with the changing markets, you know, we learn by change. And so that's what my goal has been this summer is just um, encouraging, encouraging agents to include the home warranty. If it's not part of your contract, include it in your closing, your clients still need to be protected. And when you protect your clients like that, your clients are going to more than likely send referrals to you, especially when you're saving them money. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we know that, you know, at the end of the day, you know, home warranties are not the end all be all, but really it's the best that you can do for your clients. I can't guarantee that, that nothing's going to happen to your house. I can't guarantee these things aren't going to break. And, 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 you know, uh, you know, those kind of things don't come as there's just not a guarantee for that. And so the best that I can do for my clients is to give them, you know, or encourage them or provide them with, with a, with a great company like Old Republic and Scott, how do, how do they order? How, how does an agent order a warranty? That's a great we'll question. All the way to the lake. Sure. That's a great question. So there are a variety of ways that an agent can order a warranty. The easiest is to sign up for our online portal. It's our toolbox. If you've seen any of our marketing material, we um, constantly market with a red toolbox. And what agents can do with that toolbox is they can set up an account. It takes like two, two minutes to set up account and they can order warranties there. And when they order the warranty, they are going to input information such as the co-oping agent, the closing attorney, et cetera, buyer's information. Once the warranty is ordered, immediately as soon as they um, click enter, we're gonna send an invoice directly to the closing attorney. We're gonna send the co-oping agent a copy of the order confirmation. And we're also gonna send the order confirmation to the agent that ordered it as well. And that process takes less than two minutes. Um, we always yeah. uh, still always take phone calls the old fashioned way. So if someone likes to order uh, via the phone, they can always call our 1-800 number 
And if they want to call me, I'm always available to take their orders as well. So variety of different. Well, I know that everybody in the world calls you, Scott, and, and, <laughs> and you're just kind of known as keeping your phone on. I mean, but let's be honest, that, that really is great for you. I know, I know that it makes it a hassle to go uh, work in your garden, but by the same token, it, it's a huge relief knowing that I can pick up the phone and call Scott and he's going to answer. And so it really is a, that, that's a huge blessing for so many realtors out there. Absolutely. I'm here to take care of you. Uh, but, you, know, you mentioned that, 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 that toolbox. There's a lot of other cool little toys in there for agents, isn't there? Yes, sir. So we have a um, huge marketing site within our toolbox where agents can go in and customize different marketing materials, such as newsletters, calendars. We have a uh, homeowner's tip guide actually pulled out the tip guide this weekend because my garbage disposal stopped working. So in the tip guide, <laughs> in the tip guide it gives you reasons why something may be happening and what you can do to, um, to repair it. And I just needed to reset the garbage disposal. And I found that in that tip guide. That's, um, that's cool. Yeah, I know, right? Use your own tips, Scott. There you go. <laughs> So I definitely will be posting that on Facebook this week. We also have just listed and just sold postcards. There's a moving guide. That's a great thing to leave behind when you're going on a listing appointment. You can customize it with your picture, your contact information, and you're leaving an um, item of value for that seller because if they're calling you to sell their house, then they're going to definitely be moving. And then we also have a variety of different marketing materials that are um, tangible. We have door hangers for agents that want to go door knock for their open house or prospect for um, new listings. We have one that is for um, offering a free competitive market analysis. And some of our agents like to stand out by offering a home warranty with the purchase or sell of a home. So we also have that mm -hmm. door hanger as well. We've also seen agents purchasing warranties for their clients as closing gifts. So just this past week, we added a downloadable um, gift certificate that agents can go in. It's a writable PDF, and they can add their client's oh, information, cool. nice. property address, and their contact information. Or you can hand well. them something. Exactly, at the closing. So yeah. a lot of different materials idea. there, and we keep adding to the toolbox as well. That is awesome. Now, you're... You, uh, you're gonna have a, you're gonna actually be in one of our offices coming up next month. So if you want to meet up with Scott and kind of hang out with him, I believe that you're you're doing lunch and learn at our airport uh, office on the 25th. Is that right? Yes, sir. I'm gonna show everybody how awesome. to set up their toolbox account, and by the end of the class, they'll be able to walk away with customizable newsletters and the tip guides and everything that I just described. And we can take care of that in 30 minutes. So it'll be a, a great opportunity to come in and get your marketing materials um, created and ready to go for the rest of the year. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. All right, well, Scott, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you get any, any other parting words of wisdom or anything? Just wanna remind agents that um, keep this in mind if um, your clients are interested in a warranty or if you um, want your clients to um, be in contact with me, feel free to send me their contact information. Again, I'm more than happy to call them to discuss the benefits of a home warranty and get them set up to protect them, their home. Awesome. Well, Scott, thanks so much. We appreciate thank you, you joining us this morning. So thank, thank you again. You. Take care. All right. Well, we're going to jump right back in here. And, uh, and that was great for Scott to join us. We really appreciate that. Uh, we want to talk about, you know, or actually we don't want to talk. We want to let the numbers Number, do, do the, the talking. talking. So, <clears throat> you know, this, this is uh, in our Atlanta market. So this, this just, you know, this is exactly where, where we're running right now. And so in the Atlanta market, overall average sales price is up 28.3% over a year. It's a significant increase kind of thing. And we know that that's not sustainable. That is going to start leveling off. New listings in the Atlanta market, up 4%. And goodness knows we need that. So the more listings, more better. Uh, right now, our average days on market is about 17 days. That's slightly more than the national average. National average around 14, 15. Um, however, that is compared that to 43 days last year, you can That's see high. that, yes, the market is starting to level off a little more, but we're not even where we were last year. Uh -huh. And right now, the average percent of, of you know, List price versus sale price, it's 101.7. And that, and, but we are starting to see that level off. When you start looking at more national numbers kind of, so, kind of thing, over
overall na nationwide home home sale prices is at 20 percent we're running around 28 so overall around 20 percent you can see where that's been running for the last three years asking prices on new listings is up 12 percent from 2020. now this is one that i wanted to show that that yes asking prices are up by 12 percent however overall sales prices have been running 24 percent over last year so we are uh, we're, we're starting to see some moderation in there and have it starting to level off. Even if you look at us compared to this year versus last year, we are starting to level off that 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 really steep upward climb is is finally starting to, to chill out a little bit. Kind and of I will tell you, some of the listing agents are now confronted with high water for VA loans and also appraiser coming way lower than what the others have sold for. I actually had an interesting conversation with an appraiser not too long ago, and he said he basically looked at a property to see what additional items that the property has above others to make them worth more, because that all makes a difference. Like one of my clients put a brand new siding on his house and brand new uh, hot water heater. I mean, siding is not cheap, so therefore the appraiser actually comped the property more. Yeah, so make sure that you're communicating with those appraisers. Um, pending sales are up 9% from 2020. But now, the other thing I'd like for you to see about this graph here is that, see how in, two, in 2019, that was, that was our last, our most recent quote unquote normal year, was, mm -hmm. meaning normal sales trends. We're starting to see a little bit more of that. And so the fact that we are, um, you know, going into a fall market that we're, we're um, the numbers are tapering off, but mm -hmm. we're starting to see a few more listings that really does. That is a very good sign for us. Um, new listings of homes are up 2% over last year. But again, you can see the same trends that we're kind of following, you know, year to year, which we're getting back into a normal trend last year for fall was not our normal fall. We did now, not go down. We went up. Kind yeah, of last year was a, a steady year yeah. and it went down probably around January. Yep, active listings though, the total number of listings is down still 30% from 2020 and around 30, I mean, around 44% from 2019. Right. So we still don't have enough homes. We are on an upward trend, which we need. You can see last year we were, we were really on a downward trend. We are moving in the right directions on the number of listings coming into our market kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, overall, uh, days of market inched up to just 15 days. That is starting to climb again. Uh, for the nation, it's 15. Here in the Atlanta market, we're 17. 17. So we're so slight, we're just slightly over kind of thing. And that partially is because due to the inflated price, uh, some of these sellers are selling mm -hmm. it at. Yeah. Um, now, this is a really interesting graph I wanted to show you in that over 4% of listings had price drops. Now, this to me shows that we have, you know, and, and this is kind of one of the, the power of a free market is mm -hmm. that, you know, have we seen instances where sellers were overly uh, aggressive on their price? Yes. And so, you know, if, if a price is still, I mean, I'm sorry, if a home is still overpriced, it's still going to face pressure from the market. You know, the, our, our, buy, our sellers cannot just throw out the, these ridiculous prices and not have it affect them. Uh, I'm going to show you some other data on how long they can they can be on the market and that kind of stuff in a minute. But the fact is, is that we're starting to see uh, the number of price drops increasing, not only to over last year, but to over 2019. And we're going to start seeing that move up more and more mm -hmm. as, as, you know, as, as more and more sellers kind of, well, I'm, I'm hopeful that, that the sellers kind of Kind of regain a sense of, of, of normalcy kind of thing well no the, the normalcy and value because i'm sure as a listing agent you're constantly batter with people uh, that say well my house is worth this but they really don't know how appraiser look at the appraisal yeah. value and so explaining how comps and pulling our comps and going over that with the sellers and then talking about you know like like our favorite strategy on pricing is to show where the comps are Price it just at or slightly below the market, and then let the market decide where that's really right. going to be. And and that is that, that's like your safe bet right there. But these really high, ridiculous prices, mm -hmm. you know, the, these make me move prices kind of thing, you know, you end up having to drop it because if, after, you're, you're, if your house is on the market more than three weeks at this 
at today's market. It's actually less than that. And I'll show you a graph well, on well, that. Well, I know, but what I'm saying is that you're ridiculously high. Yeah. So sale to list price ratio, it, you know, here in the Atlanta market, it's, it's 101.7 nationwide, it's 102. But if you look, we are finally starting to trend down again, kind of thing. So we are going to see more of that happening as it goes on. Now, we were just referencing this, but there's been a new study out kind of thing uh, from Realtor.com. And it says that the number of showings on a property plummet after the first five days on market. Now, it used to be we had 30 days of marketing. Mm -hmm. But with the way the market has shifted, um, you know, this study points out a couple of things that, that, that especially listing agents really need to be very, very aware of. And, and you know, it used to be you could, you could, you know, put it out there in the MLS, you might get the picture, you know, you have, you, have, you got a day to put the pictures in. Sometimes agents will, would be waiting, you know, trying to get, you know, I mean, here's the deal. When you lit, put that property live at that moment, it has to be 110% ready to go because we're seeing that after five days, the number of showings on a property, boom, just drops off a cliff. Because it, you know when when the properties come out and they are they're they're good properties priced the right in good condition they're going to get a ton of activity right up front. Mm -hmm. But the the marketplace has realized that if they sit on the market more than five days, there's some wrong. Yeah, with the property. And, and and so the number of showings goes down and 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 we're seeing where where price drops happen after a week now. It used to be after two weeks you know mm -hmm. we'd see we'd see price drops, but. It's one of those where if you're not getting enough activity out of the gate, guess what, gang? It's price. Okay? And it's, it's going to continue to be price. So, you know, um, th that is that is a, a, a pretty drastic drop in, in the number, in, in, in the days and that kind of stuff. This comes from showing time. They, they really track that kind of numbers. Uh, and so ju just knowing that, that that's what's the marketplace that we're going into. If you're a listing agent, please pay very close to attention to that, your listings need to be ready to roll on day one, uh, both on price and condition. So, one area where we have seen some some real improvement condos. is in condo demand. See, condos and townhomes kind of are that starter home for so many of our millennial buyers right now. And so that is now starting. You know, when when the pandemic kicked off, everybody wanted to get away from condos and townhomes. But guess what? That days, those days are kind of gone now, kind of like now. I know that there, there's an uptick in, in, in the COVID variants right now, and and and, and we're, you know we're praying for and thinking about all the folks out there because we, you know, we have some, just like everybody, we have concerns about that. Um, but overall, when it comes to buying houses, condos are back, and so don't don't poop of those and think that those are those are kind of not here to stay with us, kind of thing. At the same time, not only are builders, but but we're seeing some of the same issues on appliances and now furniture. There are still rampant shortages. We've been waiting on appliances to catch up for nine <laughs> months now, and they're not they're not anywhere close. And so, one thing that that we've had some closings delayed of late is when when there needed to be appliances put in, or, or you know, we had one instance where the seller was moving and they wanted to take their appliances, but they were buying new ones. And guess what? They had to, they had to leave the, the ones yeah, that they the really liked kind of thing because <clears throat> they were another two and a half months out. So um, if you do have clients that are, that are looking at appliances and furniture, it's all about lead time. Uh, windows, you know, some of your building materials, same kind of thing. Right? Win you know, windows is still 16 weeks away. Doors, 16 weeks away. And so you We're got- not, We actually order a window back in, I'm sorry, our garage door back in May. Yeah. And now well, we're until July, and now it's September. Yeah. So, so, yeah, it, it it's good. It's four, four to six months on on a lot of these things. So, make sure that we're aware of that. A uh, new study came out and says that you know right now share of homes bought with all cash is at thirty percent, and and it hasn't been that high since two thousand fourteen. But in two thousand fourteen, it was more. Investors, investors were and, buying houses that were fifty thousand dollars, less than a hundred. So it, different price variants here, um, and a lot of people are still using the program ribbon, um, Divi, and Home Partner America to be able to buy uh, cash. To buy cash, just so they can be as, in a much stronger position. Yeah. Well, that being said, overall investor activity is now back up. Okay, you can see that that you know during the height of the pandemic. 
investor activity dropped, boom. But now investor purchases are back up to pre-pandemic times kind of thing. Right. And, they, and, and they really like the starter home market. They like the entry point. Uh, they're going to be, that's, that's one of our biggest competitors in for our first time buyer price ranges and that kind of thing. And that's because most of the investors are putting them out into rental, into the rental markets. And so you can see that overall the investor market share is really close to where it was before the pandemic. So uh, they are out there and they are continuing to fight with, uh, with, with our buyers oh, at the right, moment. That's yeah. right. And so how, what does that look like um, here in Atlanta, in Atlanta? You know, we had, you know, 6,203 homes bought by investors. That is overall 23.6% of our homes. And that is up 140% uh, year over year. And so, you know, we know that, that you know, Redfin, well, not Redfin, Open Door, OfferPad, Zillow are all here doing mm -hmm. eye buying. And then now we have all these other programs, which are really helping buyers as well. But still, the investor activity in the Atlanta market is pretty high. It's gruesome, uh, and so gruesome is maybe not the right word, but you know, it's pretty high. Um, so we had uh, there is still some challenges for independent contractor status, and that's been going on at uh, there was a Senate committee hearing uh, talking about the uh, uh, the uh, you know. It's, it's called the, the Right to Organize Act, which is basically challenging independent co contractor status. Um, and that's one that, that NAR is very worried about, um, or not worried about. They tell us not to worry about it, but it, it really does carry a, a lot. It, it, it really does, because mm -hmm. then it would change, you know, like, you know, 90 something percent of, of realtors are independent contractors. And if you take that status away, what does that do to the entire industry? So there is some there are some definite concerns about that going on. Just like to keep you guys up to date on that. So Georgia was ranked as the number one state to retire by BizRate. And so this, you know, they, they go out and they rank they rank the different states every year on affordability, wellness, culture, weather, and crime. And guess what? Whoop, whoop, Georgia's number one. <laughs> and so I think that's a really great thing because you know. We have an aging boomer demographic right now. Mm -hmm. You know, like, 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 okay, boomer uh, is 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 something that we should be really, really excited about, kind of thing. Because you know, as you know, knowing that that, that Georgia is the best state to retire to, you know, we don't have crazy weather. Generally speaking, we get we get you know the hurricanes really produce more rain than anything for us. That kind of stuff. Overall, you know, Georgia is a really great place to live, and it's a really great place to retire. So if if you are you know, targeting, uh, you know, seniors, um, retirees. Well, if you that look kind of at stuff, it, Georgia a, has the highest ranking in culture and wellness, yeah. and that is two of the biggest determining factor. Yep. So, um, at the same time, we also got some other information of where are the rich Gen Xers moving. So we know that the boomers. This is a great place for our, for our, our baby boomers to be moving, but also now we, we're not. We don't rank number one, but we are number 11. And so on this list of, of where these are folks that earn over $100,000 a year. And so we are growing more than we're losing, basically. Uh, you know, we, we get about a thousand of those kind of, kind of you know, that, that's our net migration number. And so that's a really strong that's way great. to be. All right, we want to talk really quick about, you know, just some a little bit of market knowledge for you out there. And that is what kind of homes do the different generations like? So for our Gen Z, our younger buyers, um, the number one home style is modern farmhouse. They like that farmhouse look, you know, the, the little uh, doodads in the dormers, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. look, I know it's not an official term. Uh, the after, eaves, yeah, the little yeah. decor design at the eaves. Yep, and actually that goes true for, for both Gen Z millennials and Gen X, our baby boomers, they like much more of the cottage style. Uh, after that, Number two for our boomers is modern farmhouse. Uh, for our millennials, Gen X's, number two is the, is the cottage style. So cottage, cottage and farmhouse seems to be kind of the, the strongest style running all the way across the board right mm -hmm. there. Our, our, our Gen Z's do like a little bit more of the contemporary and industrial. industrial. That kind and of that's look. where you see a lot of condos and yep. um, uh, lofts are doing really well with Gen Z. Yeah. Now, what, what, uh, what do our folks look for on the inside? And so, you know, rustic modern is pretty much um, like 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 the hot interior trend mm -hmm. for 
for both Gen Z, Millennial, and Gen Xers. Uh, baby boomers, like something called Japandi. And so that, that really is a much more minimalistic kind of look. Uh, and then they move into to the kind of craftsman and traditional kind of thing. And so that's just kind of interesting uh, tidbits we wanted to share you with. Last thing is what percentage um, does each of the buying groups want most in a dream home? And this is where there's been a really interesting shift because we're seeing where a lot of it, is, it has to do with lifestyle and outside dining. So like mm -hmm. number one, garden. I mean, who would have thought, you know, a couple of years living. ago, I mean, it's always been kitchen and bathrooms, right? Right. And now garden is number one. Number two, garage, like the man cave, those kind of things. Natural light. We're spending, you know, a lot of our, a lot of our, our folks are spending more and more time at home. And so having more natural light in is a big deal. Porch and patio, again, bringing the outside in, big deal. Kitchen comes in at like number five, which in the past has been way higher on this uh -huh. list. Green lawn. I mean, that that never even made the list. Having a green lawn, uh, kind of. Well, thing. you can see how COVID has changed people in their opinion about outdoor living because a lot of these feature outdoor living, and also, um, you know, just overall place they can tinker, so to speak. Yep. All right. So last thing we have is just kind of uh, if you are looking for some cool social media content, of course, talk to Scott. He's got some good stuff too. But in addition to that. Uh, you know, we um, we uh, we use a company called List Reports, and and it, it partners up with 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 Your some favorite with, lenders. With, with, well, with our favorite lenders, kind of thing. And so now they have a new shareable library, which is all full, chock full. There's over 300 different social media graphics, boom, ready to go. All you do is just take them, post them out there on your social. And so if you're not in list reports, you, you can you find any to. of our tools. Uh, you know, uh, it, it is super easy. Uh, the, it is free 99. So the <laughs> price is right. And so, you know, that's one thing is that, that we're always looking for is, is great content for social media. And so now, you know, uh, if you do sign up for list reports, and again, it's free, you, they'll send you a new one every day. But now you've got this massive library. If you miss them, you want, you want to touch on a particular subject, you've got social media content right then and there. Uh, so if you need some me time, you can join us at max one rocks slash chat. We always hang out for a few minutes and answer any questions, do those kind of things. Um, it is max one dot rocks forward slash chat. Sorry. No. That dot is there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we have for you for this week. We hope this has been a, uh, um, a great Monday uh, helpful. And if we can be any service, any service, please call, text, smoke signals. We answer it all. I hope you have a phenomenal week. So thank you all. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Have a great Monday. You didn't do a text, smoke signal. I did. I did. Oh,